Welcome back to the video, guys. Happy Monday. Today, I want to continue to talk about why startups and enterprise companies that are willing to use AI can have better quality than they've ever had before. What I'm going to cover today is a little bit more black box playwright testing. We're seeing our efficiency go through the roof when it comes to building test automation that's effective, on point, and really providing a lot of value. So with that, let's get started. Okay, so what I want to very quickly cover is basically writing a playwright automation script using a cursor. I want to emphasize you still need humans driving your overall test strategy. Humans need to understand the relationship between unit tests, integration tests, what's covered where, how to make efficient choices with these tools. You don't want to just generate 10,000 lines of garbage code. That being said, you can still be so much faster than you were even two months ago with these tools if you're willing to use them. So what you're looking at is the code base for my basic Mern stack app. A lot of people are saying oh, this can't apply to more complex code bases. The, the reality is that having done it in the last two, three weeks on four different code bases at the unit test level, the integration test level, people who know nothing about the code base, if you understand software architecture, you can use cursor to design fantastic suites that are tremendous amount of unit test coverage, integration test coverage, component test coverage, API test coverage, UX UI coverage just truly game changing. So today we're going to go through a very quick playwright script. I'm going to load this jobs page here and make sure that a certain job appears. First things first, because we now have cursor's ability to do some of the work for us, we're going to ask it to add some test IDs to the jobs page. So I made this prompt to add test IDs to the job page so I can easily interact with the job list, right? So we're going to accept all, and we can quickly look at job ID, but already has it, which is great. So what we're going to next do is write me a playwright test in the playwright folder that directly navigates to the jobs page and then verifies the job is present using the job ID. The playwright script should wait for the API calls, which is great from a flaky perspective, and then it should select the job card using filter text that has the job corresponding ID. The test should seed and tear down the database. So nothing this is doing is revolutionary. Like as a tester, I would do all of this. It, it just saves a tremendous amount of time. And what I'm seeing is that the logic it's applying actually does apply to the more complex apps. Now, once again, it's actually not perfect, right? So it messed up based on my instructions. I asked it to seed data. It's doing a post data. This probably works 100%. It's just a question of will it work in the context of this. And actually, in this case, what I'm probably going to do is directly seed the data. So we're going to actually have it switch it. And just because I don't know exactly what the post is, and I don't want it to be dependent on other functionality working, I'd rather have it seed the data. So we're going to instead have it update itself. Interesting. And it still didn't fix itself. This is an interesting example of why this is not necessarily supposed to be driven by people who don't necessarily know what they're doing in jobs page test.js. Please directly seed the data with mongoose and tear it down. Some of you are probably saying, well, wait a second, by this time, you probably could have already been done. And that's true. Sometimes it does mess up. And there is this world in which it could be faster to just do it. On the other hand, at scale, we're finding that it's just significantly faster without, like, it doesn't mess up enough to slow us down. So in this case, it's seeding, it's putting, we're going to have the job, wait for response, yep. And then it's going to filter, has text, job idea. Great. So in this case, I'm also going to change the name because I'm pretty sure. It's queuing off spec. And so then we can try to run it. And I'm actually going to put it in the playwright folder too, right? So a couple different things. It did mess up, which is fine because it does mess up. And I'm actually going to guess it needs a .env. Yep. So add a dot .env call. So in this case, overall, it's adding this stuff. It's not probably right now as fast as it could be. It's going to add the .dnv file. Accept. Oh, it messed up. It just created a separate 
one because I changed the name of the file. So we're going to move that. Then we're going to delete this. And we're going to name. Spec. Great. Okay. So we're going to see the database. We're going to find and delete afterwards. We're going to make sure it shows up. We're going to use data job list div. Okay, great. We're going to grab the relative path. MPX playwright test. I'm going to try to run it. And it passed. Okay. So you might be thinking that's not super fast, but the point really is, is that ultimately at scale, when I'm doing this, I can produce iterating from this test, boatloads of other tests now that I already have some of this. Frankly, this time through, it did mess up more than it normally messes up. Play with it. I would recommend you check it out. I really do think that testing is now entering kind of this golden era where particularly with access to the code base, testers can provide so much value to their organization so quickly. Uh, we're doing it across clients uh, at a rate that I could not be more thrilled by testers that don't necessarily know how to use these tools, particularly as software is going to become that much more stable before it hits a test environment. And our ability as testers to provide so much more value devs to be able to run automation and a lot of that checks is, is just that much more key. With that, I hope this was a helpful video. If you want to check out more, check out workwithloop.com. Our blog there has a lot of great information. If you want us to do this for you, instead of having to hire people or try to learn it yourself, contact us on workwithloop.com. Happy testing. Thanks for checking out the video. See ya.